did you know that there are actually shoes that allow you to run faster? And even worse than that, that these are forbidden. For what reason? Because we don't want you to cheat on the 3x500 at the high school diploma exam? Well, actually, not far from it. Today, we're going to take a look at a whole host of high-tech inventions that are completely crazy in the good sense of the word, but which have nevertheless been banned worldwide, whether for a certain number of people or even for the whole world and above all, try to understand the reasons why. And since I'm a nice guy and you've probably already given me a blue thumbs up because you're nice too, I'm not going to make you wait any longer, so let's start straight away with sports inventions. We're saving the shoes for the end of this part, but we're clearly going to talk about something just as interesting. Did you know that this swimsuit is forbidden? This is the suit worn by Michael Phelps at the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, the LZR Racer. This wetsuit, created by the Speedo brand in collaboration with Petrotex, was the talk of the town. Indeed, the marketing around it was very much focused on the fact that sharks had to be dissected in order to compose a revolutionary fabric based on shark skin, which would make it possible to really swim faster. It's all a bit bullshit marketing, but Michael Phelps won an historic eight gold medals at the Olympics and each time in this outfit. So while we mustn't discount the athlete's performance, is it possible that the outfit played a role? Well, that's what FINA, Federation Internationale de Natation in French, tried to control. And despite an authorization obtained in 2008, this outfit has been completely banned from competitions since 2010, apart from the shorts version for men. But how can this outfit have such miraculous virtues? In the one year it has been on the market since 2008, 108 world records have been broken with this suit for men and women combined. And since the famous suit came out at a price of Euro 450, almost all swimming records have been broken with it. And in fact, yes, this suit has played its part. Well, not thanks to the dissected shark skin, but rather because the materials used allow several things, such as polyurethane. First of all, passive drag is reduced by 5% compared to Speedo's previous model, which means you're less slowed down by the water. There are also profiled panels integrated into the suit that hold the swimmer's body in place, reducing friction drag by an average of between 24 and 38% compared to other suits. It may seem odd to use percent figures as if we were talking about stats bars in an RPG, but in reality, all this has been tested with professionals and under lab conditions, so these values are quite legitimate. Some materials were also hydrophobic and therefore allowed for better buoyancy which also creates better support for the swimmer. So yes, we can confirm it, this outfit really helps. It's not just a placebo. And the thing is, it kind of distorts why we came to see this sports show. Because if the equipment creates such an advantage, aren't all the athletes really at the same level? Worse, don't the Speedo-sponsored athletes just have an advantage over those who aren't so that Speedo can pick the winner of the competition on the basis of their outfit? It's for all these reasons that this outfit was banned in January 2010, just two years after its launch, even though it managed to do quite a bit of damage in such a short time, given that the cheat code was a bit too strong. Strict regulations were even put in place with only the possibility of covering from the waist to the knees for men and from the shoulders to the knees for women, with also only the possibility of wearing textile outfits, so bye-bye polyurethane, which allowed all these feats. In short, with this, you can still become the fastest at sea since it's still on sale over the counter. But there is a similar alternative for becoming the fastest on land. The famous shoes I've been teasing you about all along. And here we're on a brand you know well, Nike. Same here, the latter have released shoes exploding record after record in 2020 with the Vaporfly model, a series of shoes that began in 2017 but made news in 2019, with the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next% percent, sold as the fastest shoes Nike has ever made. And with good reason. The latter, like Speedo LZR Racer really did make you go faster with an average 4.2% increase in efficiency according to a scientific study. Well, a Nike-funded study, but a scientific one nonetheless. And so, with marketing like this, Many athletes have tried them, and Vlam world records are falling one after the other. For example, at the Vienna Marathon, Kenyan Eliud Kipchoge broke the symbolic two-hour barrier by running 42.195 kilometers in 1 h 59 minutes and 40 seconds. And then there's Uganda's Joshua Cheptegei, who shattered a 15-year-old record in the 10,000 M by a staggering six seconds, and these two and many others had the shoes to pull off these feats. Given that the question of banning equipment had had its precedent with the aforementioned LZR racer, the question of doing the same with Vaporfly was starting to come up more and more. Because once again, are we judging the equipment or the athlete? For many, it's all seen as technological doping, since runners lose less energy with each step, so they're boosted. So in January 2020, the verdict is in and Vaporfly is well and truly some... not banned. Wait a minute, what? Yes. In reality, they may have slipped through the cracks, but only just as a number of regulations came into force in April, including a ban on running and prototypes for competition purposes, as well as others concerning the composition of the shoes and a host of dimensional parameters. So in reality, 
the Vaporfly is a bit of a ban, given that after all that, Nike was in the process of making even higher performance shoes, which will surely never see the light of day. But at least athletes will have the current model for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. You know, the ones actually taking place in 2021? Well, actually, I went a bit overboard. Everything I'm presenting here isn't forbidden for you, but for athletes taking part in competitions, the truth is, nobody cares if you found a way to run faster without any effort. I mean, good for you, but it really doesn't make any difference to other people's lives if you take less time to run around the block. But if it's Usain Bolt who's using it, that's a different kettle of fish or legs. After all, it's no longer sporting prowess that's in the spotlight, but the best equipped athletes. So it's hard to know where to draw the line or what to allow and what not. Indeed, an exoskeleton for weightlifting would be banned without hesitation, but shoes it really has to be proven that it really does change sporting abilities and show that at an equal level, it's impossible to compete with this particular piece of equipment. But where's the limit? After all, if you take a pair of classic running shoes and compare them to flip-flops, well, they do give you an edge. Of course, it's a great way to promote the brands that sell these products, like Nike, who can say that they've literally got shoes that are banned in competition because they're so good. And so Jean Roger, who goes jogging on Sundays, thinks they're really good and spends lavishly on a new pair of shoes. Let's hope we don't see this kind of performance enhancing inventions in sporting fields that are a little more compartmentalized, if you know what I mean. Virtual reality, too real. God, I love virtual reality. I've even installed cable guides for my headset, so it's even cleaner when I do Twitch lives with it. What do you mean you don't care? Well, I don't care because if you do, you might just come and watch me play Beat Saber like this. It's true that virtual reality opens up a whole host of possibilities and also awakens a whole host of taboos, sometimes rightly, sometimes wrongly. Ever heard of Super Hot VR? The extremely bizarre video game in terms of artistic direction, with the main gimmick being that the world is extremely slowed down as long as you don't move. Basically a game jam and therefore developed in seven days, it quickly became a hit once the full version was released but became even more impressive once virtual reality arrived as the game was given its new version totally adapted for an optimal experience with VR headsets in 2016. New game, new mechanics, new story and it's actually quite exhilarating to move around in slow motion with the helmet on your head and realize that we're not actually in a real world, and the game wants us to understand this. On several occasions, the game encourages us not to shoot at our enemies, but rather at ourselves. And in doing so, we wake up to the fact that it was all virtual. The thing is, shooting yourself in the head in a video game is pretty common, but doing it while imitating real movements immediately has a rather strong connotation, as you're really there pointing a gun at your skull. Very few people were bothered by this, and personally I found it bluffing and extremely ballsy, yet at the beginning of 2021, the developers changed their mind about all this and made these scenes optional. Well, it's weird to make this change five years after the game's release, but why not if it bothers people after all? But what really got people talking was the fact that all this was completely deleted from the game in July 2021, as if it were forbidden to commit suicide. Wait a minute. Following this update, the game's ratings on the various platforms plummeted as players saw it as real censorship and in fact it really was. Clearly, they weren't too keen to have it removed from the game and then again to do it five years later. That was so weird, but it just goes to show that if there's one place where we're going to get forbidden inventions, it's here, and we'll even mix it up with Kickstarter. For a while, there was a project that got a lot of ink flowing, or blood, I should say, because its principle was to suck the blood out of you as soon as you took a bullet or a blow in a video game. Yeah, I hope you're getting a good feel for virtual reality. And I also hope you're not planning to play a Tuhu with this thing. The project, called Bloodsport, is the brainchild of Taryn Chadha and Jamie Umpherson, the two people behind this invention, if I may say so, who thought it would be funny if they lost blood like in Mortal Kombat while playing it. First of all, no, it's not funny. And secondly, if you lose as much blood as in Mortal Kombat, I'm not sure it's possible to play a second game. So the creators of this horror did their utmost to sell it, saying that it was really to raise awareness about blood donation. I'm not sure it's a good idea to encourage people to draw blood at home and take the bags to hospital as if they were a doggy bag though. Launched in 2014 on Kickstarter, the project required $222,000 to be funded Funded, but was very quickly stopped by the site when they had only reached $3,000. Indeed, the project being perhaps a little too violent, I think the crowdfunding site didn't want to be linked by blood to it. Even if in truth, super hot suicide linked to this thing. Yeah, no, forget I said that. The healthy cigarette. 
smoking isn't necessarily the best thing for your health? Today, there are alternatives to calm the dependency caused by all this, such as vaporizers, but long before this electronic system, there were quite a few projects to create a lighter alternative to cigarettes. So we're not talking about a product that could be included in a sports diet either, but Project XA, also known as Palladium Cigarette, was designed to mix tobacco with another substance, Palladium Nitrate, to attenuate its effects, whether in terms of toxicity or addiction. Sounds great! It was in 1955 that James D. Mould, a scientist working for Ligget, a tobacco company, began to look into the question of making cigarettes safer. And it took almost 25 years of research and ampi development to come up with the famous miracle cigarette Project XA, which proved effective in reducing the incidence of cancer in laboratory animals. It's just an enormous amount of research time, and yet he never gave up. But then, once the prototype started to pass certain test phases, Liggett began to stop supporting the scientist's work. Why? Well, the problem is that if Liggett starts selling safer cigarettes alongside its less safe cigarettes, the firm's lawyers think they'll be attacked relentlessly by their customers, who are selling a product that has been proven toxic by the company itself. On the other hand, this would pit them against all the other players in the tobacco world, and given that it's a pretty powerful lobby, it could really get them into trouble. The saddest part of all is that, since he was funded by Liggett, Mold was never able to release his work, since it is the company's property. So we've probably got the secret plans for making less carcinogenic cigarettes in a safe somewhere, and that's pretty terrible. $10 million spent on this project for absolutely nothing. In short, it's very complicated to know what exactly happened in the first place to cause such a backtracking, whether it's really just the tobacco lobby that's behind it, whether the project was screwed up or just not viable. Nonetheless, everything around this affair is pretty murky as if there was a cloud of smoke put there specifically to bury it all. Speaking of projects that were nipped in the bud, we were already talking about the electric car long before Tesla came along. If you'd like to see that and other inventions that finally arrived too soon, check out my video on the subject. But what about you? If you had a choice, what invention would you ban for absolutely everyone? And don't say Fortnite, that would be too easy. In any case, I wouldn't ban anything, but I'd make the blue thumb compulsory on this video if you liked it, of course. Don't hesitate to share it with all your buddies who have some crazy ideas to tell them they should avoid in order to spare us another disaster that would be presented in an episode two on the same theme. And of course, this is authorized if you haven't already done so. Subscribe to the channel by clicking on the logo that just appeared in the top right-hand corner of your screen. This was Leo from the Tech Maker channel, and of course, never stop learning. Bye.